Have you ever thought, I wonder what I could do to make people like me more? Do you ever think the answer would be, I could eat a Tide Pod? Well, of course you wouldn't. Now, imagine that you're at your friend's house and it pressures you to do this exact thing. Kids all over the U.S. are participating in this activity, and it's all for something as dumb as popularity. These dares can have a big impact on the way teen brains operate, and they can even have an effect on what the future holds for them. One major reason teens decide to take part in these so-called social media dares is that all of their friends are doing them, so that makes them feel obligated to them, too. Studies have shown that one reason we decide to eat Tide Pods is that they can have a colorful swirl and appear to look like candy. Now, I know what you're thinking. Teens should be smart enough to know it's not candy, and I completely agree with you. But s scientists have also found that when we see the wrapping of a Tide Pod, it sets off the same part of our brain that is set off when we see food packaging. Another major reason we decide to take part in these potentially physically damaging and life-threatening dares includes the fact that the part of our brain that is used for considering the consequences of our decisions is not yet fully developed and won't be until the age of at least 20. Teens also want to seek out new experiences. The problem with this is that we do not yet fully have the ability to make rational decisions. You throw s er, it really, these facts considered, it really is no wonder teens make dumb decisions. You throw social media likes or views into these ideas and the problem really happens. Each time someone sees the post of the dares that are happening, the negative decisions are reinforced. Really, this means each time someone sees us doing these dares, the more likely we are to do them again. While it makes sense to most people, especially adults, just to tell kids not to make these dumb decisions, that's just not how our brains work, so that just won't work. Teens want to, fe teens want to feel like they belong. We want to feel like we're a part of something. When I think of ways we can work together to stop these social media dares, I think of the ways we can implement, influence good, good decisions instead of poor ones. My dad has always told me to be a leader. Every day when I leave for school, he reminds me of this. Can I really lead in moments like this? What if more positive social media things were happening? Maybe young people could begin to make dares daring their peers to do good. While I don't think I need to go online and make Instagram or YouTube videos daring my peers to do good, I do think more of us, including me, need to lead by example. When the majority of us are not doing dumb things like eating Tide Pods, more of our peers want to feel like they want to be a part of our group, not those making poor decisions like eating Tide Pods or spoonfuls of cinnamon. So what do we do? Maybe the answer really is to be a leader. I want to lead, not just to stop these silly dares from happening, but to be a positive influence in my community. What if the next person to do a social media day was my best friend? How would you feel if your best friend died from something as silly as eating a Tide Pod? I know it wouldn't make me feel like I had done all I could to stop something I didn't think was right. This world is full of too much negative, and I know that it could be something as small as me challenging my peers to do good, to make a difference, that I can not just better future generations and influence the lives of many people, but could also save the life of one more teenager who may feel the need to make a stupid decision just to fit in with their peers. That doesn't seem too hard. What do you think?